good morning all of you in today's lecture we will discuss about the measure theory concept mainly on differentiation in this uh, class we will start with the derivatives of a function in previous class we discussed about the some of the basic elementary definition and also vitali lemma Levita, vitali covering definition as well as vitali covering lemma also we discussed in the last class today we will start with the differentiation you know that differentiation and integrations are closely connected and uh, it is important to examine a question such whether the lebesgue integral may be may be differentiated with respect to the upper limit to the work time in the some sense the integral we discussed about the riemann integration as well as lebesgue integration in the previous chapter here in these consequences we discuss now the dinis derivatives are a class of generalization of a derivative they were introduced by Dini, who studies continuous but non-differentiable function, for which he defines so-called Dini's derivative. In this class, I already mentioned derivatives of a function. That is, Dini's four derivatives we will discuss, and related problems also we will execute, and. after that lebesgue differentiation theorem we will establish state and establish the concept of lebesgue differentiation theorem in this class for a function f fails to be possess a derivative in ordinary sense then the dinis derivative comes into the picture now let us start the definition of this derivative of a function if f is an extended real valued function find it at x and define in an open interval containing x then the following quantities not necessarily finite are called as follows called as dinis derivative that is for upper right derivative lower right derivative lower left derivative and lower right derivative we will discuss you are aware of the definition of differentiability you know that there is a small change occur in the curve then we can apply differentiation that is rate of change of function then we say that it is a differentiation here there is a change with respect to limits limit superior as well as limit inferior and uh, in this uh, limit superior and limit inferior things we can make a positive and negative thing here these are the four derivatives here d plus f that is limit h tends to 0 plus superior f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h here only we can take a superior element this is known as upper right derivative similarly d plus of x limit of h tending to 0 plus that is inferior limit f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h lower right derivative some of the books they are referred instead of this upper limit bar they are written here superior here inferior and the d minus of f of x is equal to limit of h tending to 0 minus bar f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h are some of them are referred this one as a definition of d minus of f of x that is upper left derivative similarly lower left derivative d minus of f of x is equal to limit inferior f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h this is known as lower left derivative these are the four uh, derivatives is known as dinis derivative and some of the 
uh, consequences are observation we are made that is known as note here. D plus of f of x is always greater than or equal to because it is superior here, this is inferior. Exactly similar way, the negative side of the limit superior is less than the limit inferior thing. The function is said to be differentiable at x if all the four derivatives, the new derivatives are equal, but different than the infinite. Means it must be finite sense, then we say that the function is said to be differentiable at x. And also there is a, some arrangement d plus that is limit inferior is equal to minus times the limit superior of minus f of x. Exactly similar way we can discuss d minus of f of x is equal to minus d of minus of minus f of x. These are the observation we can using the basic definition of derivative, we can establish these things also. If f is any function on closed interval a comma b in the then the four derivatives exist, then we say that it is measurable. This is one important point we must remember. If f is any function on a closed interval a comma b, then the four derivatives if exist are measurable. Now we will discuss some of the problems related to this. Let f be a function defined by f of zero is equal to zero and f of x is equal to x into sine of one by x. For x is non-zero element, then find the all that then is derivative. We can start with the uh, one by one, let d plus, that is upper right derivative d plus of the function at x is equal to zero. That's why here instead of x, we are choosing x, sorry, zero, here d plus of f of zero is equal to limit superior, this is the definition. Here f of x is given, that is x into sine of one by x. Here. We replace x to h, h into sine of one by h minus f of zero. What is f of zero? Here f of zero is zero is given minus zero divided by h. Here h, h by become canceled. The remaining thing become limit of h tending to zero superior of sine one by h. You are aware of the sine trigonometric function, sine theta, cos theta, etc. It is lying between the maximum value and minimum value of the sine function is always lies between minus one to one. Here, what is the upper limit for this? Upper value is one here. That's why here we are written as this is one. Next, d plus of f of zero, same definition. We can apply the inferior limit. Then here substitute, you get limit of superior. What is the limit superior? What is the lower value of this? That is minus one because sine lies lowest value of sine theta or sine trigonometric function is minus one. That's why we are written minus one. Similarly, d minus of f of zero, that is limit superior of zero minus h means replace h to minus h, x to minus h, then minus h, sine of minus one by h divided by minus h. Then again, here sine of uh, theta, this become uh, low upper limit, then that is one, you get minus one here. Minus minus become cancel here. Then sine of minus theta is minus sine theta. Sine of minus theta is minus sine theta then upper value of this is minus, then you get positive one. Similarly, d minus of f of zero limit, you can apply the same proportion here, minus of this is, this become one, then you get minus one. 
because limit inferior limit of this function. Now, next, another theorem, evaluate the four derivative, Linus derivative at x is equal to zero of the function f of x is given by f of x is equal to ax sine square one by x plus bx cos square one by x, x is greater than zero and x is less than zero, we can apply this one. And also the f of zero is equal to zero, given that a is less than b and p is less than q. Here, you can make into two types of problem here. First, we can make x is greater than zero means, what is that? d plus of f of x, means limit of h tending to zero plus. You know that the definition of uh, d plus of f of zero is this one. You know that you can apply here exactly similar way here in place of x, here we make it into h. One by h plus b into cos square one by h. And the h, h become cancel denominator and numerator because here x is a common factor for this. X is a taken common factor means you get x is one by h, here also h, h, h become cancel with uh, each other, then remaining is this one only. Then you know that the uh, trigonometric ratios, sine square theta can be written as one minus two cos theta, then one minus cos two theta can be written here in place of theta here, one by h is there, then that become one minus cos two by h. Exactly similar way, a square theta can be written as one plus cos two theta. Here we can replace one by h two, two by h, that is d plus one plus cos two h. Because the square function cannot predict the value of greater and lesser value. You already, I mentioned that cos theta and sine theta values are lying between minus one to plus one. Greater value is one and lesser value is minus one. Then this instead of limit p, limit bar, I written as supremum of one by two times here, here a plus b because one a plus b plus b minus a, b minus a into cos of two by h. Now, the value of cos uh, one by h is uh, one, then you get one by two times b. Exactly similar way here in the infimum because limit superior here inferior, infimum of one by two times a plus b plus b minus a, this become minus one means you get a is the value. Similarly, similar way you can do it yourself, d minus of f, you get q, and d minus of f is equal to p. You can work it out yourself, you get a solution for the problem for this. Now, one more example for this, find the four der Denis derivative of the function, f is a mapping from zero one to r, such that f of x is equal to zero, if x belongs to rational. And f of x is equal to one, if x is not rational means it is irrational number. When x is rational number, then d plus of f of x is equal to, that is upper right derivative is equal to limit superior of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h become, because f of zero is zero, then limit superior f of x plus h by h. You know that there are two possibilities for this. One of them is zero. Another one is the one, depending upon the value of h here. Means if it is rational or irrational. Then there is a possibility that zero or one by h. One means you get one by h, and zero means if it is rational. Similarly, what happens, d plus of f of x become limit superior of zero or one by h means if h tending to zero, then this become infinite. This is the infinity is the 
largest value, then we can take infinite. Then d plus of f of x is equal to zero. Exactly similar way here we have taken limit inferior. Inferior value is equal to zero because the lowest value infinity and zero means zero is the value. Similarly, we can take the upper left derivative. Upper left derivative means that is f of x minus h minus f of x. Here also you get zero r minus one by h. Then here h tending to zero, this is superior means zero is the minus one or zero means zero is the superior one then we can choose zero. And similarly, if d minus of f of x means you get minus infinity. Similarly, we can work it out in the irrational case. When x is, does not belong to q, then d plus f of x is equal to, that is upper right derivative, that is limit superior of f of x plus h minus one divided by h then here you get this is two value zero or one or minus one divided by h. If it is zero or one, then you get minus one by h or zero because one, if you choose one, one minus one is zero and zero minus one is minus one by h, then in this upper value is zero only superior. Similarly, d plus of f of x, then limit inferior, here only we small change upper or lower minus one by h or zero, then you get minus infinity. Similarly, d minus means upper left derivative. Minus means left, plus means right. That is the only case. You know that right derivative and left derivative. Instead of that here limit upper lower with supremum and infimum will be there. That is the only change. Here d minus of f of x become infinity, d minus f of x become zero. Now we will uh, give one more example related to this. Give an example where d plus of f plus g is not equal to d plus of f plus d plus of g. Here again, we choose in the two function, f of x is equal to minus x if x belongs to q, and x, if x does not belong to q, means that can also be written as rational and irrational. g of x is plus x if x belongs to q, a minus x if x does not belong to q. f of 0 and g of 0 so are 0 here. Then f plus g of x means d plus of f plus g is also 0. d plus of f of 0, you get 1 d plus of g of zero is also one. But here what happens, this d plus f of g is zero, zero, then, but here you get one plus one, that is two. Means this example give that it is not equal. Now we move on to a important theorem that is Lebesgue differentiation theorem. Let f is a mapping from closed interval k comma b to r be a finite value monotonically increasing function. Then f is differentiable. Also f mapping, f is a Lebesgue integrable and this condition holds. Integral upon a to b, f dash of x dx is less than or equal to f of b minus f of k. What is given? There is a function is a finite valued monotonically increasing function. Then f is differentiable. Also, f is Lebesgue integrable, and also integral upon a to b f dash x dx is less than or equal to f of b minus f of a. This is the fundamental theorem you must remember. How to prove this? Here that function is given. That function is a non-negative function, then that is a function is defined as a non-negative function where Fn mapping from closed interval a comma b to r. Such that because it's the given condition, then Fnx can be written as h times f of 
or a n, whatever you choose, in, that same thing here also change thing you can write. F of x plus one by h minus f of x for all x belongs to closed interval a comma b because it is a differentiable function. By the hypothesis, what is given, it is increasing function. The mapping, f is a mapping from closed interval a comma b to r is an increasing function. Then fn is also closed interval a comma b to r is a increasing function and integrable in the Lebesgue sense because we already proved that the sigma measurable set and measurable function then it is also integrable function it is increasing definitely it is Lebesgue integrable using first this limit n tending to infinity the limit of 1 by h tends to 0 f of x plus 1 by h minus f of x divided by 1 by h means this is the definition of differentiability. Means that is f dash of x almost everywhere. For all x belongs to a comma b. This means that the sequence fn is converges to f dash x almost everywhere. You know that for first lemma, Fatos lemma says that it must be covering in a sense that is integral upon a to b, f dash x is less than or equal to because there is a relationship between f and x and f of x. Means f of f dash, f dash x here become less than or equal to limit n tending to infinity, infimum of the integral a to b, f and x dx. Instead of f of x here, f dash x is the in integral upon a to b, f dash x less than or equal to limit of n tending to infinity, integral upon a to b, f and x dx by using Fatos lemma. Then if you applying limit n tending to infinity, infimum of integral upon a to b, f and x dx can be rewritten as, you know that f and x we are taken as here n times here one f of x plus one by n f of x plus one by n minus f of x into dx. Then definitely this become limit of n tending to infinity infimum of n into integral upon a to b f of x plus one by x dx minus integral upon a to b f of x dx. We can separate the integral. It is a linearity properties we applied here, then we get this one. So then definitely you know that there is a change of the integral values. That is t is equal to if you put x plus one by n dt become dt become dx because t can one by n is a constant number. Then, but the ratio also changes here. A plus one by n, this become limiting value B plus one by n. Then the infimum of this become A plus B, B to A plus one by n to B plus one by n. Then we can split this into, what is that? Here A to B, this is the larger value. We can rearranging the, this one. This can be written as a to a plus one by n. And because t and x can be interchangeable linearity properties, then f of x dx here. Then here we can make the limiting values a to a plus one by n. Here a to a plus one by n and b to b plus one by n because b plus one by n b is a lower limit that's why minus we can make now we can extend the definition of f by assuming b to b plus one by n f of x is equal to f of b for all x is lying in the interval b to b plus one by n if you assuming that then this become integral upon b to b plus n one f of x dx become f of b divided by n. 
You know that you get one into dx means that is x. X is equal to b plus one by n minus b. Then b b become cancel. You get one by n remaining. That is f of b divided by n. Also, f of a is less than or equal to f f of x for all x lying between a to a plus one by n. Then integral upon a to a plus one by n f of x dx is greater than or equal to integral upon a to b a plus one by n f of a to dx. Again, here one into dx means if you integrate that, you get x. X means apply the upper limit a plus one by n minus a. A become cancel. You get one by n into f of a. Then you get this integral upon a minus of integral upon a to a plus one by f of x dx become minus one lesser become greater symbol minus one by n f of a. Then you can these two things you can substitute in this equation three here. Correspondingly, then you get limit of n tending to infinity infimum of integral upon a to b f n x dx become this is the equation three. We can make it into f of b into one by n. Here minus is already there, minus of one by n into f of a. Then this is less than or equal to f of b times f of n n becomes subtracted. The infimum of this means f of b minus f of a. Then equation two become the integral upon a to b f dash x dx is equal to limit n tending to infinity infimum of integral upon a to b f n x dx that this value is equal to less than or equal to f of b minus f of a. Means f dash x is a integrable function and also finite almost everywhere means f is differentiable almost everywhere. This is the theorem you must remember. This is the fundamental theorem. And also we say that Lebesgue differentiation theorem. State and prove Lebesgue differentiation theorem in a state and prove this one. Now one simple example for this verify Lebesgue domination theorem for the function f of x is if Lebesgue differentiation theorem for the function f of x is equal to zero if zero is less than or equal to x, means x value lies between zero and one, and one if one to two. And uh, if you, you know that here, what is given here, you know that this is the thing here, zero to one, it is zero. And uh, one to two means here, this is, if you're observing itself, we say that here, it is increasing. And also at that particular point one, it is not differentiable. You know that because there is no continuous in this curve at x is equal to one. Is it correct? This is the thing you must observe if you give a problem. Then m of x, measure of x is equal to one means the value is equal to the measure of that is one measure of a single ton element is zero. Therefore, f dash x is equal to zero almost everywhere in the complete interval of one to two. Then integral upon, because I told it is continuous. If it is not continuous also, it is differentiable in a measurable function. Here integral upon e to b f dash x dx means here this the interval become zero to two. Then we can apply zero to two f dash x value is zero at that point here. Then zero f of b minus f of a means f of two minus f of zero. f of two value is one and f of zero is equal to zero, you get one. Then if you're observing this,
integral upon a to b f dash x dx is value is zero and f of b minus f of e is one. This is the verification of Lebesgue differentiation theorem. In the next class, we will start with functions of bounded variation.